This presentation is on knot tying. I'm Mary Lloyd Ireland from the University of Kentucky. With the advances in dependence on arthroscopic techniques, the orthopedic surgeon must know how to tie knots and manage sutures. This presentation will go through several of the sliding knots, including the Weston knot, the SMC knot, and the Duncan knot and talk about the principles of suture management, passing the sutures through the tissue. It's interesting, knot and different types of knots were created more for camping, sailing, fishing, and climbing. And actually, some of our knots, such as the Duncan knot, was a fishing knot. So you can see here the way the different limbs of the suture are colored, it can allow you to understand how the knots are developed. If you happen to be a fisherman or a rock climber, you're well ahead of the game as an orthopedic surgeon tying knots. Adam Smith and I wrote a chapter in this te Surgical Techniques of the Shoulder and Elbow, Knee and Sports Medicine by Brian Cole and John Sakaya, and I would tell you that this is a great book, including our chapter, and is a good one for the surgical techniques, arthroscopic, and they also do have some video links in this uh, textbook. There are two ways to pass suture through the tissue. One is directly, and the other one is by a relay system. In the direct passage of the suture, the suture is grasped, the suture is pushed through the tissue, it can be anagrade or retrograde. It's important to get the ideal angle for the suture to pass, making sure that you're happy with the way it goes through the tissue and the amount of tissue that you've captured. Be careful with manipulating the instruments to avoid damage to the labrum, articular cartilage, or the rotator cuff, and you must gently rotate the instrument back and forth and pierce the tissue. These are examples of varying angles of a bird beak. So these are pretty big instruments, so you need to carefully pass them through the tissue so you don't damage the tissue. But the suture is in the mouth of this bird beak, and then you push it through, and then you retrieve it through another cannula, usually another clear plastic cannula. So this is the direct passage technique. The other technique is a relay technique. You have a cannulated needle device or a suture passing device such as a lasso and you pass it through the tissue. The suture lasso, usually with a nitinol wire or sometimes just another suture, is retrieved through a second portal, the working portal, and then you grab the suture itself. Grasping the lasso and the suture in one pass will lessen the likelihood that the suture gets tangled. It's amazing how many tangles occur if you're not paying attention to the suture itself. Keep one limb of the suture in your cannula and don't try to cut corners in suture management. Clear plastic cannulas are very uh, necessary. Pass the suture in through the lasso. If you're using a simple suture, you tie it now. If you use a mattress, you're going to pass the next limb and then tie it. This is an example of a suture lasso device. So you can see where there are different curves to this. You gotta mentally understand to be able to triangulate how this curve goes. And then through this cannula, you can pass a loop wire or a loop suture and then relay the suture back through the tissue. Suture management is key. You need a couple of plastic cannulas to be able to manage the suture. There are varying angles and directions on these suture lasso cannulated devices. They can be very helpful in doing anterior, inferior, bank heart type reconstructions where we're grabbing part of the anterior inferior glenohumeral ligament as well as the labrum and bringing this back to the glenoid. This is a knot tying video that I did on an Alex model. There's several different types of models that you can practice on, but before you do your sports medicine rotations, 
It's very important to practice, like getting up on a bicycle again. You don't want to fall off or you don't want to get bumped away from the operating room table because your skills aren't there. So it's good to get in the wet lab and practice. To become proficient in arthroscopic surgery, one must practice, practice, practice. Having access to a shoulder model and not tying posts is very important. This is a SAM model. Practice a lot before you get into live surgical action. The two ends of the suture are called limbs. The limb that the knot will be tied around is called the post or post limb. The other end is called the loop limb, and this is the limb which is tied into a knot around the post. Knots are then pushed down the post by the knot pusher, which advances the knot. Knots can be classified as non-sliding or sliding knots. Dr. Ireland here demonstrates the non-sliding types, beginning with the surgeon's knot and half hitches. A surgeon's knot where basically we have three underpasses um, on your base knot and then do three reverse half hitching alternating posts. So you want to be equal in your post and your limb. And so we'll do an under and you push this down each time with your knot pusher. So your knot pusher is going to be on your post. You're pushing it down here, keeping tension here. And then we're going to do another under. And again, push this down, keeping tension all the while. And then we'll do another under. And that's our base knot. And then we'll do reverse half hitches on alternating posts. So we'll go over. Now this is our, our uh, wrapping limb. We'll go over there and then we'll come under switching our post back and then we'll come over and now we have a secure knot this is a demonstration of the alternating half hitches these are very important in knot tying first of all a half hitch is thrown either overhand or underhand depending on the knot Subsequently, an alternating half hitch on an alternating post is done and slid down in the joint, securing against the first. You again alternate your post and then do a half hitch in the opposite direction from the previous. Three half hitches allow for good security. The demonstration here just shows further half hitches emphasizing the point of alternating posts while alternating the throws of half hitches, demonstrating good half hitch knot tying. This is a demonstration of Nikki's knot, a modified taut line hitch. The post limb is one half the length of the loop limb. An initial overhand throw is placed, followed by another overhand throw. A final overhand throw is then placed behind the first two. This is lightly secured on your post limb, and with back tensioning, the knot is slid into the joint, securing the tissues. The knot pusher would assist in pushing this knot into the joint. Subsequently, while maintaining tension, an underhand throw is placed on your post limb. You then alternate posts, doing an overhand throw on the new post limb, and a final underhand throw, thus securing the new knot. Next, Dr. Ireland demonstrates the Weston knot. So the Weston knot, my post is in my left hand. It's blue, wrapping limb here. Bring this down where the post is half of the other suture. Bring it over my thumb, over the wrapping limb, back through, through the loop. And then as you watch the suture come down, it's a sliding knot, right? So we're going to even up our post and wrapping limb come down to the base and as I'm pulling on it you can see it seats itself and with suture it pretty much seats itself all the way you can certainly use a knot pusher if you want to again you don't have to worry about the tension right now but you want to put the tension on the post and you can seat it like that but then to flip it all you do is pull on your wrapping limb and that locks the suture so this is a sliding suture and now it's locked you do want to put half hitches on it but you don't have to worry about knot security so with my half hitches I'll go over 
under on one limb and then switch to the wrapping limb and go over and under. And then there's your finished knot. This is a demonstration of the SMC knot named for the Seoul Medical Center. The post limb is one half the length of the loop limb. Initially, both sutures are pinched between the index finger and thumb and an initial loop made over the thumb and both sutures. A second throw is placed just around the post limb. The loop limb is then brought up through the loop made by the loop limb, initially around both the post and the loop limb. Without tensioning this knot on the post, the knot is slid into the joint and subsequently tightens against the soft tissues. Maintaining tension on your post limb, tension is placed on the loop limb. This subsequently tightens the knot, essentially locking it, securing it against the tissues. This is the Duncan loop. As before, the post limb is one half the length of the loop limb. Grabbing both sutures with your thumb and index finger, the initial loop is placed over your thumb. Subsequently, three throws over the suture are carried out. The end of the loop limb is then brought down through the loop initially formed around the thumb. The knot is then tightened using a back tensioning technique as demonstrated here, after which, Pulling on the post while pushing with your knot pusher on the post, the knot is advanced into the joint. Maintaining tension on your post, an initial overhand throw or an underhand loop is placed on the post limb and tightened down into the joint with past pointing. The post and loop limb are then switched and on the new post, an underhand throw or overhand loop is placed on the post and pushed down into the joint with past pointing. This is followed by switching the post limb again and doing a final overhand throw on the new post limb, tensioning this with past pointing. This video goes through the basic techniques of not pushing and throwing half hitches. And when you're pushing the knots down, mm -hmm. you're, you're pushing with your thumb and you're kind of gathering the tension and pulling with your fingers like that. Okay. So it takes a little bit to get used to just kind of get the feel for that. Yeah. You're kind of pushing and pulling at the same time. This, just backhand. Yeah. So. There's two ways that we can push it down, mm -hmm. we can pass point and kind of pull it down. Okay. 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 And then your right arm knot. With the knot push, you can kind of direct where the knot wants to be, where mm -hmm. you want the knot to be. So if you want it on the outside of the labrum, inside of the labrum, over here, whatever, you can kind of push it where you want. And then you're going to stay right on top of it, pull real hard with your hand, push with your thumb, and then tension with the other the non post hand as well. I want that tight. Sometimes I'll use my other hand on my knot push and just kind of back it up. Push like that. You come off and you do the same throw. So if you want underhand the first time, do unhand again. For the third one, you're going to do the opposite. So two the same way, and the third one's the opposite.
All right, now this time you go the same way. I'm oh, sorry, the uh, same as the first knot, so hand. underhand. Okay. And we're gonna flip post. What that means is all of, all this time we had the post on the left hand. Mm -hmm. We're gonna flip it to the right hand. So you let up tension on the left mm -hmm. and pull on the non-post hand. You gonna feel it flip. Okay. All right. So now you see we're tying around this one. See how this is the post? Yeah. Yeah, so you're right, you're post and the knot's going around that one. Okay. So now, this one we're going to push down or pull down. Sometimes I find it easier to kind of pull down. Mm -hmm. But all our tension is going to be on our new post. Our new See how you flip yeah, back? Yeah, flip back, okay. So I have to just keep a ton of tension here. Yeah. Hand, okay. I keep this one to flip over. Another thing is, so some people tell you to pass point, which I was saying was like mm -hmm. this. If you had, one thing you have to be careful of, so I want my post, this is my third knot, so I want my post over here, but if I pass point, I could already flip my knot, flip my post. That makes sense. Or if I go to this one, mm -hmm. if I want to flip, and this is where I would pass point, mm -hmm. but if I don't and just do this, I may flip it back to this hand. So it depends how much tension you have, even when you're down on the knot. So you have to be careful. Um, with the amount of tension on each hand, you want a little bit more tension in your post hand compared to your non-post hand when you're actually cinching things down. You're going to want it tight and you want to push hard, but you want a little bit more tension in the non-post in the post hand. The technique of pass pointing is to make sure that your knot is secure and down all the way. There can be varying diameters of the lumen of your knot pushers, so you must look at the knot as it comes down and make sure that it is all the way down on the other knot. And this is the technique of pass pointing where you pass the knot on the left and then you pass point or push past to make sure there is not security. Different types of knots in a fishing book. The Griner knot, I think Griner probably described it before the Duncan loop, but the other names for this Griner knot are the Duncan loop. And this just shows you what the sliding nature of the Duncan knot is. There's also the needle knot that we don't really use, but a lot of these knots or fishing knots and we have made a great transition to be able to tie these knots in the shoulder. There are different types of knots. You must check to make sure that your suture moves and that it is going to slide because if it doesn't slide you can't tie a sliding knot. So if the knot is bound up in the bone or crossed and doesn't slide, then what you must have in your toolkit is a non-sliding knot. So use this if the knot will not slide. It's a series of half hitches. The loop limb is tied around the post. Alternate loop and post limbs. Change direction of the suture throws to increase knot security. Usually four to six throws are put down. In this situation, you may have to make sure that you put tension on the limbs so that there is knot security. You see the knot going down and you also pass point. A sliding knot is used and it's much slicker and faster if you use a knot, if you find a knot that will slide, which are most of the knots, then this is the knot type that we use. Most of the attendings at the University of Kentucky use a Duncan. I use the Weston, so you should practice this at home and in the wet lab. There's an internal locking mechanism providing increased loop security while tying. The locking mechanism is a one-way ratchet effect or a self-locking effect. The sliding knots are categorized based on the location of the wrapping limb relative to the surgeon. 
These can be proximal, closer to the surgeon, which is a Nicky's knot, middle, which is a Tennessee slider on an SMC knot, or distal in the Weston, Rotor, and Duncan knot. So depending on the location of the wrapping limb relative to the surgeon. This is the Weston knot. We'll show this in a audiovisual format as well. It's sometimes nice to have the suture be two different colors so you can distinguish the two limbs easier. So this is the start of the Western knot. And there are different ways you can use your hand. Uh, I'm ambidextrous, so sometimes it's hard for me since I'm tying left-handed on occasion to teach these. But as you do the Weston knot, you can see here where it's looped around and you bring the loop back through. You'll see how I do this a little bit differently. But the post and the loop limb need to be identified and you must be proficient at tying these knots in a dry lab before you get into the actual surgery. And then you can see where the loop comes back. Big knot pusher. The tension is all on that post limb. You leave the loop limb limp. Don't put any tension on the loop limb or it'll lock it. The SMC knot, again, is a sliding knot, distal locking. You can see the position of the hands and the post and loop limbs in these stills. Passing the knot and then pushing it down. Again, all the pressure tension is on the post limb. And then after you have the knot all the way down, you flip it and then pull on the loop limb. On the SMC, mm -hmm. this is uh, one of the stronger knots. Is, so. SMC, it's, okay. it's, it stands for, so, some people say Seoul, some people say Sanford, which okay. is the medical center in Seoul, Korea. So it's post hand, non post hand. Go around like that. Mm -hmm. Then up through the yeah. middle. And you go up through that all the way there. And then pronate and down through that middle triangle. Yep. Yeah, this one? Yep. Okay. That's SMC. Oh. Sounds pretty cool. Go around like that. Mm -hmm. Then up through the middle. And you go up through that all the way there. Through this one here? Yeah, but up through it. Up so through it. Yeah. Okay. And then slide. And then you have to lock it on. You can lock it once it's all the way down. Okay. We're start here. We'll go around the post hand like that. Like this? Yep. Okay. And just go around here like three times or so. Okay. Two or three times. So now it should just look like that. Okay. And then you go back through that little triangle right there. Right through here? Yep. Okay. Pull it down a little bit, cinch it up just a little bit. And now you can you can drop the other hand. This end? You can just walk, actually don't drop it, but you can just okay. roll loose mm -hmm. and just pull with the post. We're gonna start here. We'll go around the post hand like that. Like this? Yep. Okay. And just go around here like three times or so. Okay. Two or three times. So now it should just look like that. Okay. And then you go back through that little triangle right there. Right through here? Yep. Okay. Pull it down a little bit, cinch it up just a little bit. And now you can you can drop the other hand. This hand? Actually, don't drop it, but you can just okay. roll loose mm -hmm. and just pull 
with post. The secrets to success in knot tying and suture management is to practice, practice, practice. You've got to respect the sutures. They will tangle, much like a cobweb or Christmas tree lights in the basement. They will tangle, so respect the suture. Keep track of which is which limb so you don't unload the anchor. And be prepared to have some knots that do occur. You want to make sure you're pulling on the right limb when you get rid of these knots. Thank you for your attention.